guy was contracted for four weeks and jumped out. Good morning and welcome to the United Church of Christ of Annapolis. We need to begin by apologizing to our faithful out in remote land. Uh, we've lost active video this morning, so uh, we'll follow along using our slideshow and we're told that audio is working quite well, but the video is not with us this morning. So bear with us and join with us as we start our worship with some announcements. Oh, excuse me, excuse me. If you don't mind, please, Gloria. I'd just like to get the blessing for the mother and then we will proceed from there. Thank you so much. Good morning, everyone. My name is Elizabeth DeMazanette and Reverend Love asked me to give a special um, blessing for Mother's Day, so welcome, everyone. Uh, it's an anonymous um, author. To mother, you filled my days with rainbow lights, fairy tales and sweet dream nights, a kiss to wipe away the tears, gingerbread to ease my fears. You gave the gift of life to me, and then in love you set me free. I thank you for your tender care, for deep warm hugs and being there. I hope that when you think of me, a part of you you'll always see. And I'd like to end with um, my daughter, Isabel, was baptized in a congregational church north of Seattle. And I knew that I was in the right place when I found that congregational UCC church because every Mother's Day, one of the members would stand up and ask for prayers for love, concern, and caring for all the women who wanted to be mothers and were not able to. God. Gloria and all of the magic you bring to our parish life. Thank you so much. The grace and peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Today we celebrate the fourth Sunday of Easter and Mother's Day. I'm Jamie Orr and I'm grateful to worship with you church on this day, especially grateful because today we rise up and honor all mothers. Let us pause for a moment and be present in this space. Let us, in silence, reflect on the truth of how we feel in body and spirit in this moment.
God has called us together today in worship. Let us give that call voice with our call to worship. And you can rise if you wish, in body or in spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Jesus said, heal the sick and tell them God's heavenly reign is near you. Hear these these words words of Jesus, I tell tell you, you, whatever whatever you ask in prayer, prayer, believe that that you will receive it, and you will. The Apostle Paul said, do not conform yourselves to the standards of this world, but But let God transform you inwardly by a complete change of your mind. To God be the glory, honor, and power forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. And also with you. Please share a sign of peace with each other in whatever fashion you're most comfortable. to come forward, please.
Good morning, children. I am delighted to see you today. This is a special day for us, right? Okay, so let's go around with names. Dylan. This is my granddaughter, Dylan. I'm so happy you're with us today, baby. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Finn. Finn, you know Finn, uh-huh. Edwin. Edwin. Thanks for being here. Ian. And Ian. Good to see you all this morning. You know, what's the special day? Okay, good deal. How loud? Uh, so they can hear you. Mother's Day. Okay, so today is Mother's Day in case you hadn't heard. <laughs> it's Mother's Day. And what I'd like to ask you to do is each of you, if you, we've made a, um, a sort of a little altar here. I'd like for you to go and take one of the artificial candles, the candles that are there. Can you do that? Even as we speak, like right now? <laughs> go for it. That kind. Mm -hmm. We're just being cautious with the fire. Okay, go ahead and you can light your candle. It's just an opportunity to think about the light, the light that our mothers bring or that other people's mothers bring or all of us had a mother, right? And I know you're struggling with getting those lights on. You know, when we had our installation, our mature members, myself, struggle with getting those lights on. But we can pick another one. Ian's gonna help you. We're gonna take time and do it. We have the time. We do. We have time for you. And you can also make a different selection. Oh, okay, there's community work happening. <laughs> mm -hmm, which takes time. Thank you. Okay, so everybody lit? Okay. Do you know what these are? Boxes, similar thing. Oh, I'm dropping all my stuff out. Could you pick it up for me and put it down? Money. Money. <laughs> Money. Things of value. Okay, things that you think are of value. Thank you, sweetheart. And we did that, and I'll put that back. These are some miniature gift boxes. I had someone in my church who would make these and bring these to me. That was a while ago. And what did it look It It had half pink, half white. Okay, so it's half pink and half white. You outgrew that, right? Gorgeous dress. You look beautiful in it. Another gift? Anybody else received a gift that they appreciated especially? Uh, a, sword, a sword that looks like it's from the medieval ages that had a wolf at the end of it. Okay, I missed that last part, but it was a sword that looked like it was from the medieval ages. And, and, and the, the, just a the, moment. The, there was a wolf head at the end, and I like that because I like wolves a lot. A wolf head at the end? Uh-huh. That sounds like quite an uh, rare and exquisite sword. Okay, and did you have something that you, a gift you got that you really loved? You can come back to me. But okay. Did you I say got you, nothing. you got nothing? Okay, well, here it comes. <laughs> Did you remember yet? I got a drone. I like drones. <laughs> yes, you got a drone. I've heard you talking about that down here. Okay. Okay. 
Anything you want to say, Ian, before we move away from the gift part of the conversation? Okay, if you think of something, just shout it out. I'll come back to you with the mic. So our scripture today is about the gifts, the greatest gifts, but these are gifts from God. What kind of gifts do you think God might give us? Yes, ma'am. Protection. Protection. Oh, that's a very good one. Okay. Other gifts that God might give us? Maybe spirits. God made the first people, and I think they get give them spirit a heart. Spirits? Okay. Okay, and other things that God might give us. Okay, so God gives us gifts that we just have from being a human being. Protection is a good one. Love. Connection to other human beings. We're connected to each other. Um, some other things. Okay, well, you can think about those things. So today we're talking about the greatest gift, which really cannot be intercepted. Do you know what interception is? Sometimes they use that word in sports. Yeah, but I don't know how to put it in the right term. Okay, that, yeah, you know what it is, but you don't know the terms. So I was thinking some of the, th I'm gonna try. I'm not so much of a sports person, but I know that when one team throws the ball meant to throw it to another team member, and a person that's not a team member catches it, that's an interception, where something gets taken from the place it was trying to go that way. What's that? Like in football. Yeah, like in football, exactly, precisely. Okay, so we've talked about sports, we've talked about gifts, we've talked about uh, lots of things, you know. So that's what our scripture is about, the greatest gift of all, and no interception is possible. Are there things you want to share with me before we pray the Lord's Prayer? Yes, ma'am. Mm, I forgot. <laughs> it's okay, that happens here very frequently. And if it comes back to you before we're done up here, just let me know you wanna say it. The lights you could put back on the table, do they just light us up? Unless you especially want to keep something, I think you should just put it up there and let the congregation enjoy it, yeah? Thank you for your attention and cooperation. And while you're putting it back, I'll just say we're meeting next week to talk about some of the great things you're going to do during the summer. Ms. Eastman and Elizabeth DeMazinette are talking about some of your great excursions for the summer and Erin Curran. Okay, so we're going to pray the Lord's Prayer. Okay. Father, Mother God, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Have a great time in the children's time. Are you going to the children's time? Have fun. <laughs>
for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely, goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. The gospel reading today comes from the book of John, chapter 10, verses 22 through 30. At that time, the festival of the dedication took place in Jerusalem. It was winter, and Jesus was walking in the temple in the portico of Solomon. So his adversaries gathered around him and said to him, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. Jesus answered, I have told you, and you do not believe me. The works that I do in God's name testify to me, but you do not believe, because you do not belong to my sheep. My sheep hear my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. What God has given me is greater than all else, and no one can snatch it out of God's hand. I am one with God. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us, thanks be to God. So here we are. Good morning, United Church of Christ of Annapolis. Good I am the Reverend Arbor Love, and we want to welcome you to this worship service, whether you have come to gather in person or if you're joining us virtually. You'll be listening to us and not seeing us today, but we know you're there and you know we're here. I invite our visitors to Wave your hands as we look around if we have visitors. We would love to greet you during the passing of the peace or as we exit the sanctuary when you're in our church. Any visitors? So I'm joined today, I'm joined today, I'm blessed to have my daughter and granddaughter here with me. And my son should be 
touching down at BWI right about now. And I told him that we would be here till noon, but don't speed. If he gets a rental car, just come slowly. If he catches us, he'll catch us. If not, we'll do something afterwards. Happy Mother's Day to anyone who has mothered and everyone who had a mother. I'm sending love and light your way for a wonderful day. Thank you, Elizabeth de Mazinet, for that loving welcome on this Mother's Day. With all the emotions that can surface during Mother's Day, we can feel disconnected from others. I want to remind us that we are not meant to remain disconnected. When each of us drew breath, there was someone else on the other end of that fleshy cord running through our navels. There was someone else whose nutrients we drew upon to sustain our own lives. Regardless of what happened after that, we are not intended to remain disconnected. People of God, amen? Amen. 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 We thank our liturgist, Jamie Orr, this morning. Remember our visitors' conversation coming up next week, following worship on May 15th. Come and ask, a, come and ask questions about our church and share your own faith journey. Before we move on, Donna, Donna, come here, babe. Just take this back to your seat. I see you, and I want to pray with you. Thank you. First Mother's Day without my mom. And we see and know that you're heavy with grief, and we know that you're heavy with joy and memories. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Receive this. Thank you. Yeah. We're with you. All right. Please know and accept that next Sunday is the last Sunday with our music director, Dr. Kathleen Orr, after a cumulative 42 years of service as a church musician. We will take the time to celebrate this moment in the life of our church and to celebrate Dr. Orr's ministry among us. Well done, good and faithful servant. <laughs> Kathleen, your ministry has been so powerful. Every Sunday that the Lord has granted me the grace to stand in this pulpit. It is a delight to work with you on staff. You have blessed me so. I wasn't, I wasn't expecting that. I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> ah, on Sunday, May 22nd, our guest musician is the Reverend David D. B.G. Flaherty, ordained in the Central Atlantic Conference. Reverend David is also ordained as a Catholic priest in the Reformed Catholic Church of Baltimore, Maryland, and he plays the organ. He pastors St. Sebastian's Catholic community and is an experienced floral designer for worship liturgies and other celebrations of faith with lots of discount partnerships in Calvert County and Anne Arundel County. <laughs> when his video was shared in our staff meeting and with the worship committee, we each, including Dr. Orr, were encouraged. She says, I want nothing but the best for the church going forward. Our director of music search committee chair, Joan Brannigan, has given her thumbs up. Let us warmly welcome Reverend David when he joins us as guest musician in our morning worship on Sunday, May 22nd. We thank Dr. Martin Smith and Joy Smith for all their care and effort on getting our piano and organ tuned and serviced and ready for candidating. Yes, lots of hours and investment in that. We are grateful. One more bit of good news. Our own Reverend Ellen Whitco will preach for us Sunday, May 29th. We will be glad to have Ellen back here as the messenger of the hour. That's May 29th, so mark your calendars. It will be in the weekly What's Happening 
She sent a pic and a bio. You'll read it even though you know her. Mark your calendars. And don't forget the pride parade that steps off on Saturday, June 4th. If you need information, Rick Dove can help you with that. And to continue the festive time of Pride Weekend, we will have a special open and affirming communion on Sunday, June 5th. Please plan to participate. If you are moved to do so, it's not too early to start thinking about Juneteenth. Juneteenth is the oldest known celebration commemorating the end of slavery in the United States. Annapolis had one of the best Juneteenth parades the first year that it was declared a federal holiday. My daughter and I went. I even got a robe there and some stoves. <laughs> yes, it was beautiful. It was envisioned by the leadership of the Annapolis Juneteenth Planning Executive Director, Ms. T. Adams, Ms. Phyllis T. Adams, and well supported with an executive order by the county exec, Stuart Pittman. These and other announcements, again, will be in your weekly What's Happening, so please look for it and stay tuned. Okay, church, are you glad to be in God's house this morning? Yes. <laughs> oh, I was glad when they said unto me, come let us go into the house of the Lord. You know, I came running when they said unto me, come let us go into the house of the Lord. UCCA, will you pray with me? Oh God, eternal spirit, you have called us into relationship to fulfill a mission whose meaning we yet dimly see. Grant to us a secure sense of identity as people of rich human lineage, as children of the promise, as nobodies unless you claim us as your own, and make us impatient with any identity that does not propel us into the struggle for justice, liberation, and peace. Give to us freely, generously, the gifts of faith and prayer, holy God, the gifts of prophecy and discernment, the gifts of love and hope, that we may never cease doing your will. In Jesus' name, ashe and amen. Let the church say amen. amen. I ask that you think with me on the topic of the greatest gift, no interception possible. Just think along with me and pray for me. Our gospel text today is rich. Jesus is walking in the temple that we call Solomon's porch. Some of his own fellow worshipers are gathered around him saying to him, how long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, tell us straight up. And Jesus answered, I told you already but you won't believe me. He goes on to say, you see me doing the works that only God can do through me, but you do not believe me. Jesus continues, because you do not belong to my sheep. My sheep hear my voice. I recognize them and we run together. I safeguard their lives and preserve them. No one will snatch them out of my hand. This word we have from the Gospel of John, chapter 10, verses 29 and 30. What God has given me is greater than all else, and no one can snatch it out of God's hand. I am one with God. In other words, in other words, in other words, you may have heard it said like this. What God has for you, it is for you. The good news here, people of God, is that you and God are inseparable. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. When people are getting to know each other, there comes a time when the topics become more intimate. Consequently, conversations become more engaging. We have reached a point in our church community where people want to talk with me more about race and racism. I welcome these conversations and offer us the comfort of knowing that our denomination, the United Church of Christ, 
has been richly immersed in sacred conversations on racism for more than 20 years. So we're in the right place at the right time to have these conversations. We have lots of UCC resources to help us, but the conversations can be exhausting when they are on demand and without structure and agreements. Take a deep breath. Feel the love of God. There's a sweet, sweet spirit in this place. I offer this to you because some of us are a little weary today. Those of us who have been navigating the constructs of race and gender and national origin. These are worthy and essential topics of exploration in any community building effort, and even more so in the household of God. So let us be encouraged that the conversations we are having after worship, this is the good news. The women's talk back, the men's talk back, and all the work that we do together is getting us ready for the ongoing structured conversation and connection that we need in order to live into our proclamation of being anti-racist and an open and affirming church. Could I see the hands of the men who were at the men's talk back? Here's one over here. Not you, Mary. <laughs> okay, just the men who were at the men's talk back. Thank you for showing up. There was a lot of rich interaction and laughter and connection. It is a blessing that we have among us a growing membership of varying identities to be a part of these conversations. As opposed to the conversation happening with people who are saying what they think the reality is of people living in a particular identity, we are grateful to have people there to have the conversation. There is a significant difference between a, a conversation that talks about people of varying identities and a sacred conversation among people of varying identities. I look forward to more building of community. I look forward to the unsilencing of conversations that may have been awkward in the past because we didn't have the tools. I look forward to the acknowledgement of identities among us that are invisibilized. I look forward to the acknowledgement of identities among us that are not so apparent. Let the church say amen. amen. <sighs> mm -hmm. As we open the text this morning, we see Jesus talking about a time of disconnection in community. Jesus goes so far as to say, if you can't feel me, it may very well be because I'm, you're not my sheep. Have you noticed how our Savior can be rather blunt, not mincing words? Where we would prefer to avoid the sting, Jesus says, my sheep can hear my voice. That's what he says is right there in the text. As we consider all the divisions of humankind, some obvious, some less apparent, which are learned and indoctrinated, divisions of humankind that are enforced in the harshest of ways. It is no wonder that when church folks seek to build the inclusive community, we often do not believe that we can. We do not believe that we can learn quickly enough to access our God-given power to truly connect across difference. God has given us that. For people of faith, it can be very intimidating to try and welcome the broadest array of humanity into the worship experience. Yet outside of our human distresses and systems of devaluation of others, God cries out to us, I have what you thirst and hunger for, for your long-term survival. God says, I do not keep it on different shelves or in separate specially marked waiting rooms. I am your step right up source. That's a divine come and get it if I ever heard one and no one can snatch it out of my hand. The word says so. Who am I preaching to this morning? As the mother of a newborn, I felt a deep connection to all humanity in a way that I had never experienced, an undeniable, universal connection to every other human being. 
I can recall ferociously searching through a Woolworth store to feed and answer the cry of someone else's stranger baby when my newborn at home was asleep. One chilly day in late August, as a brand new mother, I was completely taken by a tender madness that stimulated an indescribable desire in me to find and feed a hungry baby in this Woolworth store in Ithaca, New York, where I'd never seen a person of color, employee, or patron. Without regard for the institutional discrimination and the infamous retail character of Woolworth stores, I knew that there was a hungry, distressed person in my vicinity, and that I was the one in that moment who could be the resolving vessel. In my postpartum state, my whole being urged me to seek out that hungry infant, despite this painful history of racism and lunch counter sit-ins, protesting Woolworth's policy of not allowing black people to dine in their department stores. But on that day, on that day, on that very day, when I heard the hungry newborn cry, I had milk. How many of you know what a milk letdown is? Uh-huh. If you need it, the Lord God's got it. Got everything you need. Me, I had more than enough milk. It was overflowing for any new human being who sent out a distress signal. I had what was needed in that moment. I want to tell you something, it was not black milk. It was not southern milk. Stay with me, it did, it, I did not even have a specific minority milk. No gay or straight milk. This was not Jim Crow milk or equal rights milk, no affirmative action milk. I did not have school to prison pipeline milk or public assistance milk. My milk was not exclusively for future felons or victims of over-policing or educational and healthcare disparities. It was simply life-giving, sustaining milk. I had milk for the world springing effortlessly from my bosom, effortlessly and nobody could snatch it out. For a child raised in apartheid in the United States, it was a realization to me that I had connection outside of just being a Negro. I was 20 years old in a Woolworth store, and my body was responding to someone. Me, a child of literacy activist who perilously labored in voter registration drives to secure the constitutional right to vote. I had everything essential to end the present suffering of another human being, even if it was not socially acceptable, and in some states illegal. You may have heard it said before that what God has for you, it is for you. People of God, there is enough. There is enough love. There is enough time. There is enough money. There is enough springing effortlessly from God's bosom. God has ample gifts to go around for all of God's creation and God's children, and no one can snatch it from you. When it's God's will for us to have it, no interception is possible. Thanks be to God on this Mother's Day and every other day. God bless and keep you. Amen. Every Sunday, this church is here in person and online, gathered to worship and to observe Sabbath. But church is more than what we do within these walls. It is a calling to the greater mission to meet people where they are and to embrace the new thing that God calls each of us into. Whatever that call may be for you and for this church, we thank you for all the ways that you support the church in time talent, and money. Please feel free to give digitally through our website or for those who are here by leaving a retiring offering in the offering plates as you exit after the service. Also, if you're in a place of urgent need due to the coronavirus, please contact a member of the staff to make use of the Deacon's Release Fund, which has been set aside for that purpose. Thank you for all your gifts and for your giving.
Good morning. My name is Victoria, and I am the chair of the worship committee. The Bible tells us that God loves a cheerful giver. If during the week you give at home, you give at work, you give at in community, maybe you find it hard to give on Sunday. But it is the Sunday gifts, our offerings to God, that are the kind of giving that fills us up instead of emptying us out. Let's pray that our gifts today move the work of the, world, of the Lord forward and that in giving freely and cheerfully, our hearts be renewed. God is a good God. Can we hold on just a moment? Let me pray over the offering. Would you get this basket? Thank you so much, Kayla, for blessing us with that. Oh, God, we thank you for, um, let us pray. Both of you. So you said, bring all the riches into the storehouse so there might be meat in mine house. Oh, God, we thank you for the abundance that you pour out on us, and we ask that you accept 
would we bring back a portion of what you have blessed us with. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Christ, all creatures here below. Praise Holy Spirit evermore. God in all three whom we adore. Amen. To bear one another's burdens in prayer is a holy privilege. It also demands a willingness to be a channel for God's power. Therefore, in silence, let us offer our confessions to God that we may be cleansed of anything that might hinder our efforts as intercessors. And in confessing, name those sins which separate and distort, sins of pride, of narcissism, and resentment, sins of hatred, bitterness, and jealousy. Let us also name our connection with humanity's sins, sins of poverty, war, hunger, injustice, neglect, and discrimination. Let us pray in silence now. And now, let us confess our sins together. Have mercy on us, O God, according to your steadfast love, according to your abundant mercy, blot, blot out, out our transgressions. transgressions. Wash, Wash us thoroughly from, from our iniquity and cleanse us from our sin. sin. Create in us a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit, spirit within us. us. Cast us not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from us. Restore to us the joy, the joy of your salvation and uphold us with a willing, with a willing spirit. spirit. Amen. Amen. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Siblings in Christ, I announce with joy that we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. And friends, we now share our prayers of hope and concern together, confident that God listens to our prayers and calls us together in response. We invite you to share these prayers now by raising a hand in the sanctuary and sharing them after being called or by commenting on them in the YouTube page. After each prayer, we say, God, in your grace or mercy, hear our prayer. And I'm going to claim the privilege of the microphone by raising up a woman who has been called, who was called home recently. Some of you know that I served for a number of years on the Chesapeake Association Council yes. and as representative to the association and the conference. And during that time, I had the great pleasure to meet, work with, and be mentored by Miss Dorothy King. Yes, Lord. Truly one of the strongest women of God I've had the privilege to know, and sadly, a woman who was called home this past week. Sunday, leave. yes, last Sunday. She leaves behind a family, she leaves behind a congregation that nurtured her, and she leaves behind an association, a conference, that will miss her voice very deeply. So please pray for her family, her congregation, and for all of us who knew her. In your grace and mercy, hear our prayer. prayers. Who else? My name is Laura, and my mother has dementia, and this week we had to place her into assisted living. So I ask for your prayers for her to help, to help her settle in peacefully into her new home. Thank you. In your grace and mercy, Lord, hear our prayers. I'd like to offer a praise for this 
wonderful Mother's Day service, which I certainly needed and appreciate. And a praise for everything that God gives us through this UCC church and that we might act together with openness and honesty and against racism and discrimination in our church. Thank you. Lord, in your grace and mercy, hear our, our prayers. prayers. I would last ask for prayers for peace. I follow what is going on in Ukraine and it just tears me apart. When I see the damage and destruction and horror of war in that country, it uh, takes me back to when I was born and I saw the aftermath of World War II. And it is, I can only tell you that in America, we don't really have something to relate to that kind of horror. So I would ask for prayers to bring an end to this war in Ukraine because these people cannot take any more. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Lord, in your grace and mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Uh, Sandra Picard says a prayer for eyes to be open to see, ears to be open to hear, and for difficult questions to be asked and questions and prayers answered. Lord, in your grace. Yeah. Uh, uh, Kathy McFadden wants to um, say thank you for all, all, thank you all for sending me cards, emails, texts, calls, and visits. I am healing and feeling much better. Thank you for, thank you, church, for all of your prayers. So. Um, God in your grace. Hear our prayers. Sandra Picard would like to say prayers for my mother as she continues to heal. Uh, God in your mercy. Hear, Hear our, our prayer. prayer. Uh, Aaron would like to say for the job interview on the 10th, prayers for the motherless and child childless women on this day. God in your grace and mercy. Hear our, Hear prayer. our prayers. Also, um, the sound went out so <laughs> at one point. So, um, for those of you uh, attending online, um, please see the uh, bulletin for information on uh, Anna, Anna Rundle uh, connecting together. Thank you. Amen. Um, I wanted to wait a bit to be sure I wasn't crying, but I have so much gratitude toward Reverend Love when she first found out that my older dog was he had to be put to sleep, and I didn't wait long at all. But, um, you know, I live alone, and so my dogs really are my children, and she was with me for that entire time. And then, when I decided I could wait only two weeks to get a different dog, I was sending her pictures of the new dog. So, thank you so much. I'm a new mom to a puppy, and Reverend Love was behind me all the way in both the grief and the joy. Thanks be to God. Lord, with joy in your grace, hear our prayers. Um, uh, I, of course, uh, I have a t uh, prayers of joy uh, in the midst of my loss of my mother and my grief over these last few months. Uh, there was a shining bright spot. My daughter, my youngest daughter, got married two weeks ago in Florida. Beautiful wedding, and I'm grateful to God for such a wonderful event. Lord, in your grace and mercy, Hear, Hear our, our prayer. prayer. Friends, we now pause in silence to hold those prayers which we have not given voice to today. God, in your grace and mercy, hear our, hear prayer. our prayer. Let us now conclude our prayer by saying together, O oh God of all comfort, comfort our, our help in time, time of need, we humbly ask you in the power of your, of your Holy Spirit to heal your people. Look upon, Look upon us, us with your mercy. mercy. Comfort, Comfort us with, with the assurance of your care and goodness. Save us from temptation, temptation and despair. 
grant, grant us patience under, under affliction, affliction and, and enable us to live the remainder of life in peace. Through Jesus Christ, who came that we may have life and have it more abundantly. Amen. Amen. Now, before, uh, thank you. Before the last uh, hymn, I would like for us to just take a moment and notice if there's anybody here with us who wanted to be a mother and either things didn't come together at that time or it just wasn't to be, I would like to ask you to come up. If there's anybody who's wanting to be a mother in the future and it hasn't happened yet, I'd like for you to come up. If there's anybody who's ever experienced brokenness in a relationship with their mother, don't all come up at once. <laughs> I'd like for you to step up. Yes. If there's any mother who has experienced brokenness with a child, I'd like for you to come up. If there's anybody who was raised in foster care and is not sure who their mother was or in adoption, I'd like for you to come up. If there is someone who is not female who is a mother by their identity and what they're doing, I'd like for you to come up. Anybody who has a place that they want to heal and notice around mothering, please come up. Thank you for your honesty, my baby. Is there anybody else who would like to come forward? Okay, and what I'd like for you to do, this is perfect. Yes, this is perfect, yeah. I heard in spirit there were six. It's complete. Thanks be to God. I'm going to light the first candle. This I use for my fireplace, so if you don't know how to use it, here's another lighter. You pull that back. Sometimes I'm not good at it. You push it forward. There you go. I'm going to light the first one. Thank you for gathering here. I want you to light a candle and read one of these little scripts of paper. Thank you, Kathleen. God, my shepherd, I don't need a thing. Thank you. Thank you, God. Thanks be to God. calling for you to come home. Oh, yes. Calling 
time for you to come home. Thank you, God. Come home. Spirit, move. Come in, my darling. I want to thank you for being able to move with Spirit in this moment. We had exactly six candles and exactly six people to come up and six scriptures to read. These are the six verses from the 23rd Psalm, our lectionary scripture from today. Thank you. Thank you for being here again. Hi, baby. about healing. At the cross, God took all of our sicknesses and diseases and put them on Jesus' originally perfect and healthy body. The Bible says, by Jesus' stripes we are healed. Today we encounter Jesus, the healer, who reaches out with his hand and touches the sick, and by his touch they are healed and made whole. Jesus is with us when we are hurting, ill, wounded, or confounded. Thanks be to God for this Mother's Day service and for all of you here. Go in peace. Amen. Yeah.